Demo7. Demo7, how are you guys doing? Uh, I am at my office here, and I'm going to go over a few things um, about my channel. Um, just real cool things, you know, things that are coming up on the channel. Uh, the, <laughs> I normally do this, you know, while I'm where I'm sitting down at my chair over here, uh, but the audio gets really bad, and I forgot. I actually have a new lavalier mark, mic that I'm going to be using, and I totally forgot to get it. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera up here a little bit further, um, and I'm going to step behind the camera here, and you guys tell me if, if, I'm, if you can hear me when I'm sitting here. So let me just, uh, sorry I have to ask you guys to do this, but let me just step behind the camera real quick and see if you guys can hear me. So, and I'll try and speak up, guys. Okay, guys, so if I'm, sta if I'm sitting right here, um, let me know if the audio is okay, if you guys can hear me, or if it's too quiet. So if it's too quiet, I'll just stay behind the camera, and I'll just kind of hold things in front of the camera. All right, so I'm going to step back and let me know if you guys, uh, if that's okay. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's too quiet. Okay, now, uh, if I'm standing behind the camera like this, does it sound very, not very loud when you're sitting in front? Okay, uh, I will do this in a different fashion then. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand next to the camera, and I'm going to flip this around like this sound is better now okay so I think what I'll do is I'm gonna adjust the camera here sorry guys I should have my audio issues taken care of pretty soon here because um, I have I have a, a new lavalier mic I have a lavalier mic right now that was I actually tested yesterday uh, on the or two days ago with the slope soaring video but um, the the cord isn't very long so the new one I'm gonna get is actually recommended by professionals and uh, it's got like a 20 foot cord so I can move around and then we'll get rid of all these um, these issues. I was going to use my, my Rode video mic, uh, but I have that attached to the lavalier mic that I don't have right now. So this is my normal go-to right here. Okay, so let's just get on with it, guys. So, um, so just a, a quick update about a few of the items here. Let me um, let me bring this in a, actually even a little bit closer, and I'll tilt this down just a smidge. And for some reason. That skylight is really blowing me out there. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, uh, just a quick update about the uh, the, the slowpoke. Uh, I just flew this this morning for the first time on 4S, and I really really liked it on 4S. Now some guys were suggesting putting a different prop on it for 4S. Is the 12 by 8? It's just a massive prop. Uh, the really cool, really cool looking prop. And everyone everyone that sees this airplane, they're like, is that a stock prop or is that one that you put on there? Um, it's, a, it's a stock prop and I used 4S with it today. It actually flew great and the thing about 4S is that you have the power when you need it and you don't always have to fly it around super fast. Um, so I flew it uh, around today. I, it's great. I'm loving the landings. I actually landed it about 15 times a day because when you have an uh, airplane with, with landing gear, it's just fun to land them and take them off and stuff like that. This thing takes off really well, straight as an arrow and just goes. it only takes about 10 feet on the ground to get up in the air. So. So I've did, done some modifications to this to, that made it a whole lot better because every time I landed, it, it, the back end of it would scoot out. So what I did is I actually bent the landing gear further out, so it's going to give it a little bit more flex. And um, I also, you know, you bend these out, you also have to compensate for the angle of the wheel, so I bent these straight. I could probably even bend these out even a little bit more. Um, I'm going to have a full, a full uh, fledged video on this obviously coming up. Uh, the biggest complaint I have about this airplane, there's two things, um, is that the tail wheel will sometimes spin around like this. Let me show you guys this. This is not supposed to be like this. This actually flaps back the other direction. If you can look at it right now, it's actually not straight compared to the tail. Um, it's a really quick fix, but let me just show you guys real quick. What happens is there's the little tube that contains the rod right here, and there's a piece of foam that it's supposed to be aligned with, and basically the tube gets uh, gets out of line with where it's supposed to go. So um, you basically have to reach in here and flip that around. And that it's a big flexible tube, so um, it's actually going to help save your servo and not strip it out. But I'm actually going to put a little bit of hot glue down in there. I'm going to have to get some on a stick and put it on there. So this there's basically, like I said, there's a block of foam in there that when it gets when it, the tail wheel spins around, the the tube flips up on top of that tube and then it keeps it cockeyed like that. Other than that, um, that's been uh, pretty good. The other complaint I have about this airplane is I wish they would have made this uh, piece that comes off 
much, much longer. It needs to be bowed down to here because um, because when you put the batteries in, it's it's only Velcro. There's no there's no strapping in there. So if they've extended it down here, they could actually put like a Velcro strap in there. Uh, that was that would be my one suggestion for this airplane. Other than that, it does slow down pretty slow to fly, and it, it flies fast and it flies slow as well. You have to get the CG exactly on. So I have my little uh, T pins in here. If you guys can see those. Uh, set exactly at 85 millimeters. So when I have this upside down and I'm balancing it, I don't have it exactly level. At 85 millimeters, I want it to tip forward just a tiny bit, uh, and that seems to get the CG exactly right. That's always a good starting point. As you guys know, the foam densities are always different in these airplanes, so 85 mil 80 to 85 millimeters is going to be a really good starting point. So I made that modification to the landing gear, and uh, I tell you, it really... For, for paved surfaces, it really helps us absorb some of the shock and uh, it also it makes the track of the landing gear a lot wider. So when these are together more, it's much taller and the plane just wants to capsize over. So real easy modification. You just have to bend the wires properly. Um, and I'm uh, very experienced with uh, doing the, the wire bending and all that stuff. So I am going to try some, I have some full foam wheels that are exactly the same size here. So I'm going to try those and see how I like those as well. I'm sure I'm going to like those a lot better. But let me put this aside, guys. Um, let's talk about the sidewinder for just a moment. I know you guys have had like an earful. I know you guys have had like an earful of the sidewinder for quite some time now, but I'm going to talk about this. So I flew this this morning again. It's still the same 5.5 by 5.5 prop, the one that's not recommended. It's still fully taped. Now, the more I fly this airplane, the more confident I get with it, and the more I'm actually able to like t t put it into a tight circle and rail it around um, and do some more acrobatics with it. So what's been the result of that with the taped wing and everything? The taped wing has survived perfectly. It has not fluttered once since um, I, um, I uh, had the, my initial flight and then I taped it afterwards. And I'm still running, like I said, the too big of a prop and I'm still running 4S and all that stuff. Now I have had some hard landings with this and it is starting to show like I've got a little bit of a bow out on the plastic right here and the tape is getting uh, beat up here. But for the most part landings are really easy, you just have to keep throttle on until the last moment and then just pop it down. I have had situations where I've had a little bit of a tailwind and it did go into a tip stall and it hit the nose a few times here and you can, actually can't even tell. Uh, it took the, the small bumps and bruises really, really well. I did have, okay, here's a, a really a good tip for you guys. Um, I'm sorry this is this light's getting blown out here. Let's see if I can tilt this this way a little bit. But the clevis horn that goes into the wing, gosh, that's terrible. Let's see if we can do it like this. Okay, yeah, the clevis horn. Uh, I went to a flight the other day, and you guys, I actually had this on film, but this was pulled out of the wing, and I think it's probably mainly from a uh, hanging rash. But I went ahead and glued this one on, uh, and I tested the other one a little bit. Uh, the other one seemed fine. So I went to fly it yesterday morning, threw it up in the air, I went to bank a turn, all of a sudden the airplane went into a, a death spiral and went, went all the way down to the, down to the ground. So what actually happened is this horn pulled out of the wing in flight and I only had one aileron, um, but still survived really, really well. I must have gotten lucky at the last moment, the airplane must have just, you know, uh, hit um, in, in a way that didn't destroy the whole frame. Now I saw one other guy on online who actually had a, had a bit of a hard landing and his whole frame cracked down the middle. Now I haven't had that experience yet so, so you know, keep an eye, an eye out for that. And I also did an FPV made it on this as well, I just I don't have any video for it because I accidentally, um, I deleted the footage by accident. So on Sidewinder note, I'm going to pull you guys right over here, it's, uh, come with me shall you? show you guys this giant box right here is another sidewinder and uh, hobby king saw my uh rebuttal to matthew ogborn um and basically you know he wanted to send his, his sidewinder back and it's not fit fit for, for flight and all that stuff um i i put an offer out there to hobby king i told them if they want to send me another um um sidewinder uh, with the proper prop, the 5 by four, 4 5 prop that's supposed to come with it because uh, the problem was is that none of the kits came with the proper prop and everyone was using the improper prop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this one up. I'm not going to do any modifications to it, just stock as it is, uh, using the same batteries that I fly my current one with 
and uh, I'm gonna use the proper prop and we'll see if it flutters or not. And, and if it flutters, I'm basically not gonna recommend the Sidewinder uh, to ge general public. Um, and But if it doesn't flutter, you know, um, then, you know, Matt's just kind of, he's uh, just being his 12 year old self. <laughs> I, I think he's kind of going up in arms about a lot of things. So Matt's kind of the king of, uh, you know, reinforce everything that you, you reinforce. Uh, he puts tons of carbon into his airplane, but when it came to this one, you know, he um, he kind of went off the rails. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, I, I love Matt, so you know, he he has so many uh, other uh, projects that he does really good with them. So anyway, um, so like I said, if if the thing flutters with the proper prop, then I'll, I'll call out Hobby King and say, yeah, you guys got to do something about this. If not, it's just fine. If you're gonna take this thing uh, any faster than say uh, 100 miles an hour, you gotta tape the thing because I'm I was flying 108 miles an hour uh, the other day and not just straight back and forth. This was dive straight up, straight back into a loop, into into a, into a full tight circle, full speed, you know, uh, in the wind as well. So I was actually uh, flying quite fast. So this uh, should come in handy pretty soon. Let's uh, tilt back over this direction, guys. Uh, and hello to everyone. I will talk about, or I'll go through you guys' everyone's comments in just a moment. Um, let's see, I've got a couple notes here. The Desert Fox, guys. The Desert Fox is, <laughs> it's been a really fun uh, car. It is fairly inexpensive. Um, I have broken it. So, guys, I have the front A-arm here, uh, which was broken, but it still actually works. Can you see all the... Uh, can you guys see all the zip ties that I have here? So you can see the bro broken spot right there. Right there. Right there. Um, so uh, I went to order these uh, A-arms and they didn't have any in. And I just got an update from Hobby King that they are in. And um, it's an expensive part. You know, it's a $2.39 for a front plastic A-arm. So actually I'm quite happy about that. So I did order them and I'm going to have some of them coming in. Now, the biggest suggestion I can suggest for this car is that you don't bash it too, too hard because I've, I've really, really, um, I've really put this thing through the ringer. So, uh, I let my son uh, th drive it as well and he's a little less forgiving on the throttle than I am because I know when to kind of let off, you know, as it's tumbling and whatnot. He'll just let the thing tumble and he'll just have it full, pin full throttle and uh, anyway. The, the, the cage here has seen better days. It's uh, actually completely broken off. I've got some broken spots here, some broken spots here. So uh, my suggestion for Hobby King is this plastic material that you use to make the upper cage, it needs to be a more flexible material, something that you can bend a few times before it'll actually break. This material seems like it's too hard. Like if you just, if you bend it too hard, it's gonna snap. You need some of that plastic material that is semi-flexible. Uh, uh, other than that, the cages are actually only ten dollars a piece. So um, I'm going to go on to the uh, website. I'm going to order like two cages in case I break another one. It would be cool to actually practice to to actually get it in there and actually reinforce it with some carbon or something like that. Anyway, so uh, the hot the desert the Hobby King Desert Fox. Um, I really really like it for what. Okay, so a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys might be thinking, which one should I get? Should I get the Zod Dart or should I get the Zod Nano Talon? So uh, <laughs> um, I can hands down tell you guys that you should not get the Dart. Can you see that motor mount right there? Can you see it? Can you see that? Um, I decided to take this thing back out. As you guys know, I exploded this thing on 4S. The thing just, you know, uh, self-destructed at you know, uh, going into the, into the wind and everything. Uh, I fixed it. I glued the motor pod back off, but this motor pod, it really needs to be redesigned. Um, they, there's just not enough. Let me see if I can get this actually so you guys can see. There's just not enough foam around this motor mount to keep it steady. So uh, I decided to throw 3S in here and just to toss it off Kite Hill and fly it. I flew it out and it actually vibrated and Pop, the motor popped out and I crashed it. So, um, given that I've reinforced, I've tape reinforced this and also put a carbon rod through here, uh, and just that I'm gonna have to repair this thing again. And look how thin 
look how thin this this material is here. It's already super flexible. Um, um, it's already super flexible uh, styrofoam. So uh, it's expanded PP, EPP actually. Um, so I'm gonna glue it back again. I'll see if I can get this thing to fly. I will put a different prop on the front of it. This might be a nice cruiser and everything, uh, but it's not gonna be a super sporty airplane. Uh, if that's if that's your your use, then then by all means go for it. But do not fly it on 4S because it will explode. All right. Uh, and as far as the, uh, the Zod Nano Talon, so so I actually flew this this morning. Um, just a great flyer. It just really flies really well. The the um, the stabilizer in it is okay. The uh, the gyro is a little slow to react. I'm wondering if there's a way I can speed up the re reaction time. Because what happens is it will react to something and the aileron will stay up and it'll slowly come back into play instead of just instantaneously going um the where, where it should but uh, in general this has so much fun technology and it. it has it has the uh the wings that you just plug in uh that servos are all centrally located it just makes for a really fun flyer i don't like this in wind as much as i like it in the calm it, it gets kicked around by the wind uh pretty pretty uh, quite a bit but um, as, far, as far as a line of sight flyer, it's, it's been pretty good. Um, I do want to just put like a little FPV backpack right on the top of the, the lid here. Uh, instead of putting the camera in the inside, just a little micro um, FPV flyer uh, for Kai Hale. I, I think it'll be really, really fun. Um, so anyway, so if you guys are up in the air about the, the Nano Talon or the Dart, I would, the Dart just, it has too many quirks going on with it. Like the wings just are so flexible that, that they're just, it's just, if there's any airplane that's not uh, fit for fit for uh, for for uh, purpose, fit for purpose, uh, it's probably this one. Um, even though you know, it's I like the idea of it, I, like being the swept wing forward and all that. Um, now the the Nano Talon, uh, you can fly this easily on 4S. It does get a lot of torque roll going on uh, with it as well. So, but I fly it on 4S all the all the time. All right, let me see. Look at my little notes of things. Um, uh, let me just show you guys uh, my my Trojan uh, because I got that thing fixed finally. Um, I'll let you know a story about that. All right, so this is the Durafly Trojan T28. Beautiful, beautiful airplane. Um, I've got the little FPV backpack in there. It came off in the crash, so you can kind of see it's a little bit loose there. But I also got a Pagoda antenna that has the little um, the little uh, UFL connector in there, so I should have a better um, reception of this thing. So, what happened to this airplane? What happened was uh, I was flying it up at Kite Hill. I was practicing my landings, all that stuff. Um, I flew a full full battery. Put another battery into it. Went to take off down the runway took off straight and then suddenly it veered to the right and went right into, into a pylon. Uh, if you guys have seen any of my videos uh, at Kite Hill, uh, you'll see those, those, those stumps all along the edges of the runway and it's just unforgiving for airplanes that are trying to take off and that don't make it. So smashed the motor in, uh, took out the entire cowl uh, and everything. Um, so what I did is I actually I glued a piece, I took out the motor mount, the broken one, I glued a piece of um, a ply on the front of this thing. Uh, I matched the, the down thrust and the right thrust of the, uh, of the old motor mount. I actually cut it and used it again. Um, and basically it makes the motor stick out about, a, about a, like a quarter inch more than it did before. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, but uh, everything survived. I was really worried about the nose gear uh, breaking. It has a thing where it stutters when it first comes out, and sometimes it doesn't want to come out, but if I do it out of 10 times, it works seven times in a, in a row. So uh, I also learned that this is a bit of a handful of an airplane to, um, to uh, fly, and I was definitely feeling that at Kite Hill because I'm not used to having um, to land on the runway with landing gears. I have so many belly landers. So I learned that with the flaps that you actually don't use full flaps like that. That's full flap right there because you'll just tip stall the thing. Most of the guys were saying leave it at about 45 degrees and that should be plenty of flap to slow the thing down. So I had full flaps going on. I think that's what, what where a lot of my bad um, messed up landings were from. Um, so I should have this up at Kite Hill pretty soon. And for some reason, my um, my original uh, my original uh, 
flight of this as actually off of YouTube. I don't know what happened to it. If I accidentally deleted it somehow, I may have. Um, but yeah, so as far as, um, let's see. But yeah, anyway, it, it came together really nice. Uh, the cowl was very inexpensive, but they only had it in the international warehouse. So I had to wait a long time for it. Um, but uh, let's just um, take it apart. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unbox the uh, the Sidewinder real quick. And, well, actually, let me go through your your uh, comments real quick if you guys have any. Okay, we have a few. So I'll start from the top. We'll say hi to everyone and every, everything. Stick Mix. Rudy, how you doing, buddy? And I look like a ghost here, don't I? <laughs> so I have my skylight up here, and I've diffused the light, but it's just the, the camera for these live streams. It, it def doesn't have any type of tap to focus or anything like that. So let's just take a quick peek. It's uh, okay. Yeah. So so obviously the um, the audio is a little bit better because I'm closer. Uh, hey, Michael W. Uh, two monsters. How's it going? Uh, uh, Darrell Shavers. Uh, sounds good behind the camera. Thank you. Uh, Michael W. Says wireless mic. Well, I'm gonna have a wired one to start with. Uh, it's hard to get the 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 uh, it going with the iPhone. Slow days. Says what's up all? Drift Wire Warrior says hi. RC Aviation, of course. Hi. Uh, did Hobby King send you one? Yes. They, so what? Uh, I think I might have explained that in the video, but yeah, uh, Hobby, uh, saw my video uh, where I was talking about Matt, and they said, "Sure, we'll send you one, and let's see uh, if you can get it to fly uh, with the proper prop." So I think I went over that. I know you were thinking about uh, about it last time you were streaming about this. Yes, you are correct. RC Aviation Slow Days says DW. Um, Let's see, Anthony Ginello. According to Llama, I'm unallowed to troll you. That is absolutely right. <laughs> All right. Um, Drift Warrior says Yokomo. Yeah, my Yokomo. Well, this is actually my old. Um, this is my my son's car, which is a little bit out of out of sorts right now because I was trying to use the motor and something else, which didn't work. So I'll put my son's car back together pretty soon. Uh, 239 Giant says, hey, 707. Um, Smooth Virus says, I hear people complaining about the wobble with that plane. Otherwise, it seems, everyone seems to like it. So Smooth Virus, basically, if you don't want the wobble, you have to put some packing tape on it. And I was basically railing this thing around yesterday morning, and it flies great. I'm actually, like I was telling everyone, I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. So I'm able to fly it towards its edges. And it, no wobble with the tape being on there. So that's been really cool. Um, build a wraith and be done with it. Um, I'm not a big fan of the wraiths. I'm, I'm sure it flies just fine. And Smooth Virus says 45 degrees is a lot. Okay, maybe I, I actually have uh, three different settings. I have flat, um, like 30 degrees, and then uh, 45 degrees. So, um, oh, uh, Smooth Virus says I meant the Nano Talon. Uh, okay. Okay, so, so let me just back up the thing here. Now, when I back up the camera, you guys won't be able to hear me as well, but I'm, uh, the next part is just going to be me opening up a box. So, um, you know, it'll just be me opening a box. So, <laughs> All right, so one thing to know about the uh, Hobby King Sidewinder is it comes in the most enormous box I've ever seen. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Oh, I forgot to mention. The most important part of all. Guys, uh, if you haven't already found me on Facebook, um, I just started a group two days ago, uh, which is called the 7 Demo 7 Forum Group. Uh, and basically that's a place to get together for, um, for sharing everything that we love about RC. As you guys know, I love RC. I've been doing it since I was a kid. And um, uh, make sure that uh, you guys go to Facebook, find uh, 7 Demo 7, forum group and uh, send in a, a join request and I'll, I'll, I'll grandfather you guys in so we can, it's a public group so uh, there's no, um, you know, there's no privacy in it, in it or anything like that but it's so we can, everyone can go there and share their videos, promote their YouTube account, um, I can promote anything that I'm promoting, um, it's just a place to come that's going to be pr pretty drama free, there's been a lot of drama going in on some of the FPV groups and with Matt's group so uh, let me just take this out of here, get the trusty old knife going here. So let me just pop this out of here real quick.
I do uh, thank uh, Hobby King for sending out one um, as a test unit because um, it's, it's like the information we all want to know. Like, you know, Matt said that he actually f flew it with the 5045 on there and he said it's, it still wobbled, but this was after he used the 5050 and got it to wobble, so maybe it, it might have weakened the frame a little bit. So I'm wondering if this, uh, if this new one is going to, um, if it will do everything that it should, says. And like I said, I, I, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty um, honest guy as far as like, you know, I'm, I'm all about the facts. If, if, if this thing flutters with the prop that they suggest, you know, I'm gonna tell you guys not to buy this thing. Uh, and, and, you know, Hobby King's taking a bit of a risk here because, you know, if it flutters, then it's, and then, you know, it's gonna have some bad press. So they were, they were like, hey, let's send you one. So they're very adamant about sending it. Uh, and like I said, Matt said that he flew it on 5045 and got it to flutter, but he did not have it on video. I trust Matt, what he's saying, but uh, I want to see it for myself. So, so let's just uh, set this up here real quick. And we get this other, let me get this other huge box out of the way. All right, let me just show you guys this ginormous box here. Okay, that is the giant, giant box that it comes in. And Anthony was saying, uh, if it still flutters, then just laminate it. But you should not laminate this airplane because it is not EPP, it is EPO. And EPO, with such a thin, thin wing, wing cord, will warp no matter what you do with it. So. <laughs> 239 Giant says, you do more unboxings in one year than I do in a lifetime. So lucky. I, I, I do consider myself super lucky, and I'm, I want to be as humble as I can with, all, with this, you know, interaction that I have with Banggood and, 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 um, and Hobby King. I, I, I do consider myself very fortunate. I do uh, spend a lot of time and money on this channel to keep, keep it working, and I know you guys appreciate that, and I appreciate all you guys being here. So let's... Let's take a look at the Sidewinder. I know you guys have seen this before, uh, but let me just take it out of the box real quick. And we'll see the new frame, and we'll see if um, if they put the proper props in there. It's, it'd be really terrible if they didn't. <laughs> Hopefully, they took apart each one and, and slid the, the props in there. It might be in this giant box. I might need to go through all that, that, that packaging there. Oh, boy. Come on, Nelly. You can do it. No, um, you know when uh when when Hobby King sends things out like this, they're getting some product, you know, information as well from someone who's an end user like myself. You know, I'm not sponsored by Hobby King as well. They've never had any agreements with me or anything. They never said, they never said, wink, wink, nod, nod. Make sure you give it a good review. I've been critical of Hobby King uh, items, and I've been super positive about Hobby King items as well. And sorry, I'm having a, a space issue here. Let me get this thing out of here. There we go. Okay, so there's nothing left in the box. All right, let's see here. Um, so I saw one note about, uh, I've laminated that EPO with no issues. You have to do it at low heat. EPP uses higher heat. Most definitely, if you're, I, I just have experience from my, my friend Jamie Bruxton, He's, and I know how good he is with wings and keeping uh, heat low and everything. He tried to laminate his and he completely warped his frame and said he ruined it. So, what has been changed with the Sidewinder? Sorry, I just got here. So, it's basically if they sent one to me uh, for testing purposes because I bought my first one and I'm still using it um, with the, pro the improper prop, and, but I've taped my whole frame. So, the, what they did is they sent it with the proper prop, which is a 5045. So, let me just check the props in here. Now, uh, in Hobby King's. Um, defense here if they don't have the proper props in here they actually sent me a different box with the props in them so they're dowel props 5045 uh, multi-rotor props okay so we have we have the sticker sheets here okay, i'm going to pop the sticker sheets over here
Okay, so the prop that's in here is the 5.5 by 5.5, the same one that I have on my airplane right now. This is the improper prop. And, like I said, I'm not sure if Hobby King didn't put the proper prop in this one because they knew they already sent me some. I, I would have to talk to Ian about that. I'll send him an email. I'll let you guys know. I don't see the other props as it is right now. Let's see here. Uh, one thing I have to say about the Sidewinder it is definitely... It is definitely, um, it is definitely, uh, well packaged here. So, um, a little bit of a surprise here, let me tell you guys, that, um, they actually sent me the kit version and not the plug and play version. Hmm. That's really strange. That's gonna be making, that's gonna make it much, much harder for me to, to, uh, to test because... That means I've got to transfer all of my electronics and everything from my old one, which I kind of don't want to do, onto this new one. I thought they were going to send me a plug and play. Um, so I don't see the, the other props in here. Let me just check everything. Got the, get the number sheet. Okay. Okay, so here is the, the new frame, guys. Um, and it uh, looks like it's ready to go. It, it has, uh, it has the LED extensions in here, but uh, no servos, no ESC, no nothing. So uh, that's a little strange. I really wish they would have sent me the plug and play version like the one I bought. Uh, I, I thought that's what they were going to do, but apparently not. So let's, um, let's, let's go ahead and end it here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at you guys' uh, everyone's comments here. All right. So let me just take a quick peek and you can look lovingly into my overtired eyes <laughs> guys all right let's take a quick peek here um smaller prop uh hi bruce jazzy says jazzy net oh sorry wrong channel <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> second sign winder yep yeah. uh, so eric yeah so uh hobby king decided to send me one for um for prop testing proper purposes with the proper flop with the proper prop so basically that's it um okay Okay, guys, um, that is it for today. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. I should have my audio issues taken care of pretty soon here. So uh, thanks for, for spending your morning with me. I will talk to you guys soon. Um, and hopefully I'll get some, new, some more uh, live flights from Kite Hill. Uh, there's been a lot of great wind at Kite Hill for doing the live uh, slope soaring events. Um, so that's been really uh, awesome to have. Um, and also, head to Facebook and find the 7 Demo 7 Forum group uh, and join. Uh, send me a, a friend request or a join request and I'll get you guys in there. Uh, I want you guys to take really cool pictures of the airplanes, take any type of videos, post them up there. I want it to be a, a thriving community of people who are enthusiastic about RC like I am, like I know you guys are. Uh, so thank you so much, you guys. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Oh wait, I saw a couple more comments come up here. Uh, it says, uh, 239, yeah, you have a great day too, keep them flying, does the plane lose control when the flutter occurs? Scott Thompson, no it doesn't, it just goes flappy, flappy, flap, and you let off the throttle and then you just keep flying, so. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll talk to you later, bye-bye.